John Cass. Hi. Hi. Welcome I'm, to Go Johnny Go. I'm Judy Sky Boss. All right. <laughs> thanks for having us out sure. today. Appreciate it. Yeah, thanks for a, coming. This is a nice little place you got here mm -hmm. in White Bear Lake. So you guys just opened this when about eight weeks ago? Eight weeks. Mm -hmm. So far so good? Yeah, real good. All right. Well, you know, for the folks who want to get to know you a little bit better in your store, why don't you tell us why during this, you know, kind of digital downloads of all kinds of music, would you want to open a vintage record shop? Well, when you have almost half a million records, it's probably a good idea to open a record <laughs> store. I think that's that's a, a good thing. Um, I've been selling records online and uh, overseas uh, in, in a lot of cases for 15 years. Are, is your whole collection here? Or is this just a little bit? Well, the store itself is of small, tiny sliver of all the <laughs> records that I have. But the rest of the records are close by, so I can go get them. In fact, the best way to approach the record store is to go on my website first, gojohnnygo.com, mm -hmm. and click the search button. And maybe you can search for some things on your wish list, things that you've ah. always wanted. And then uh, go where it says, drop me a line. Send me an email of what you're looking for. I can pull it out of the warehouse, and then when you come in the store, you can look through all the bargains that we have here. Sure. But you can also get something you really want. Right, right. So I'm curious, how did this all start for you? Were you like a five-year-old and got your first album, and then you were just hooked, or what? What started? That's all this? pretty good, actually. You Was know, it's, it really, it's like <laughs> every. I've always spent all my money on records. It seems like the only thing that I ever really, you know, really had a lot of passion about. So, mm -hmm. and it stuck with me yeah. all these years. And during the early 90s when everybody was trying to get rid of their records because they wanted to switch over to CDs, I was the guy who got all the records. Ah. And I found a place to store them and I started selling them through the mail mm -hmm. and it just kept getting more bigger and more popular and sell sales were better every year. Why and, do you think that is? Well, there's a couple reasons why people like vinyl records. I think that to me the most important thing is it's a record is something that you can't make on your computer whereas mm -hmm. you can make a CD gotcha. and you can, you know, you can do it in a couple of minutes whereas a record is like a real artifact of what the thing is, especially when you're talking about listening to music from the 50s, the 60s, the 70s, and the 80s. Those, that music was intended to be on vinyl. They actually made it to be. So when you're, when you're listening to a vinyl record of, from that era, it makes the most sense. Now, if you're listening to music from, say, the 90s or the, the 80s or right, whatever they right. call it, <laughs> I think that listening to CDs is just fine because okay. that's what it's intended to do. Right. So the real artifact is vinyl for a lot of the best music ever made. Who are your clients are you finding? There's two different kinds of people that buy records. There's young hipsters and old burnouts. <laughs> <laughs> and it, you know, surprisingly, they're looking for the same records in a lot of cases. The younger kids, uh, they want uh, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, Jimi Hendrix, The Grateful Dead, mm -hmm. The Beatles, The Rolling Stones, Bob Dylan, Bob Marley, uh, ACDC, all that kind of stuff. And right. so do the old burnouts. They want, they want to buy their old <laughs> records back. The ones they sold and bought CDs, now they want to get their records back. Now, you've had a, a long history in the music business, yes. too. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, I've done just about every single thing in the record business that you could name. I've worked uh, in radio. Uh, my wife worked in radio. Um, I you know, was a writer for magazines. I was in bands. I booked bands. Uh, I worked at a record manufacturing plant, actually pressed the records oh themselves. Goodness. Uh, you know, I've done you know virtually everything. I was in distribution, worked for uh, Division of Warner Brothers for 12 years. Oh and I was the sales rep to all the record stores between Duluth and El Paso, the whole central part oh of the U.S. Gosh. The people that own record stores in that uh, part of the country was the whole central U.S. Those are all my buddies. I still go on vacation with those guys sometimes. You know, Fun. I'm friends with them all still. And I always really admired people that ran record stores. They're kind of a uh, uh, interesting bunch, and uh, I always kind of looked up to them. They always, always really kind of seemed very, very maverick-like. And uh, <laughs> to actually do it myself now has yeah. been uh, something that uh, I guess in the back of my mind I always knew I would, because I had all of the fixtures and the supplies. So when uh, you know I had one week to get the store open, it was no problem. We were open <laughs> within a week, and we were you know selling records the first hour we were open. So White Bear Lake because it was convenient, or is well, this that's where the good? records are. Okay. There's a half a million records, you know, oh, and I, I've goodness. been storing them around here and. You know, this is just the right in the middle of it. It's yeah. a nice little space. This is about as close to an old school record store okay. as it was in the 60s and 70s as you can get right okay. here. So now tell us how the store operates, because obviously you can come in here and buy records, but you can come in and try to sell some too, right? Sure. How does that all work? Absolutely. If you have records that you want to sell, the best thing to do is to give me a call. Uh, call me um, at 612-735-1643. 
and take about five minutes and when you're with the records flip through the records and let me know what you have you can say you know frank sinatra elvis presley the beatles michael jackson that way i know what kind of records you have and that way you don't have to haul them all down here if i don't want them because right. i'm kind of picky about what i want okay. certain things i'm looking for and there's certain things that i'm not and i hate to have somebody do all this work and then have them have to you know carry them right. in and out you know especially when the weather's absolutely. bad absolutely and so if someone brings some records in are you giving them a fair price kind of a market value do right. you think no well, I've got to okay. make some money too but you know yeah. generally if there's something that I want and it's in good shape I'll pay anywhere from a couple bucks up to you know fifty a hundred dollars if it's something that I want bad enough if it's something that I want and it's scratched up I can give you about a quarter. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of records I don't want at all. So. Right, right. Well, I happen to bring some albums. All right. uh, a couple are mine, but most are from a friend of mine at work. And he's quite the collector, so I wanted to get your impression sure. on some of these. Here's one. Sticky Fingers. Yeah, it's early look. 70s Rolling Stones album. This is what, I think it's a Spanish pressing, if I'm not mistaken. There was a couple of different covers on this one here. This one's, <laughs> uh, I remember seeing this as an import when I was a kid at the stores all Pretty the time. Pretty impressive with the hand coming out of the camera. Oh, yeah. Is that quite a collector's item? Or yeah, absolutely. Kind of, okay. Absolutely. I, I wish people would bring stuff like that in all the time. Oh, all right. Well, then maybe there's more. Now, this one is mine. Sure. And it was probably not one of the first albums. I had other ones. But but I was a fan of Donna Summer. I don't know if she's very popular today, Ah, the queen of disco. The, she's a disco queen. Sure. I love Donna. Yeah, and she just passed away like a I year know. ago. I yeah, know. she's a, you know, she's a, she's a, a, an icon for that yeah. kind of music. Um, there's not a lot of people looking for disco records. There are a few select people, amount of people, and they're people like me. Well, but, but they're looking for the more obscure stuff. Donna yeah. sold two to four million yeah. copies of all her albums, so they're yeah. easy to find. All right, so that one's a quarter. That's what you're telling me. That's worth a quarter. Okay, let's try this one. It's not mine, but it's one of my favorite because I always love that kind of a, whatever you call it. Uh, that's that. my favorite Rolling Stones album. There's ah. a band that has like 50 albums, but that's my favorite one. This is the, the Rolling Stones trying to be psychedelic, and I think they did a fantastic <laughs> job of it, actually, that on this record. That had pretty unique at the time. This is a 3D cover, and if you go like this with it, you can see different things, and at four different angles you could also see all four members of the Beatles that are hidden oh down here goodness. in the flower so you can wow. not only see the Rolling Stones moving their heads around but as you turn it you can also see like John Lennon or Ringo peeking no, out. What was the reason for that? Any idea? Well because on the Beatles album Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band it says ladies and gentlemen welcome the Rolling Stones on ah. their cover so they wanted to return the favor. Quid pro quo. Right right right. So but I actually like this better than the Beatles <laughs> Sgt. Pepper's that's personal taste. Is this with this be a pretty yes. valuable with find. that cover it is and it's on high demand even though this probably sold I don't know like probably a million like this it's in high demand so there's a lot of people looking for very this very cool one. okay let's see this one a little bit of bad bad finger, finger straight up yeah oh yeah that's the cover on that one yeah this is a band uh, this everybody wants this record too I wish I had a whole room of these <laughs> oh well maybe I'll get my friend to come in and see if he can get some sure wants to sell tell all your friends come on in and check out the store so it's really hot right now in terms of buying yeah. and selling do you foresee what do you I mean you kind of predicted this when you collected all those mm -hmm. albums so what do you see for the future I think that it'll it's not gonna go away I think there's so many people in the world today that every single niche has an audience and as there's more people those niches aren't going to go away. There's still people buying saddles and accordions and covered wagons. And hopefully Go Johnny Go will be to the point where we're big enough worldwide yeah. that we are the place to go for records. Yep. Especially for stuff from Minnesota. I mean, I kind of pride myself in really specializing in that kind of thing. There's people all over the world looking for records from Minnesota. I, I sent imagine. one to China a couple days ago. A lot so. of Prince fans, I would imagine. Of bet. course. Yeah. You know, of course, him uh, amongst many others. Yeah. And well, this has been very exciting. I mean, this is just, I could sit here all day and look and listen, and I bet you are awesome at the uh, trivia game. Well, thank you. For yeah. music. Yeah, I do fairly well at it. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Johnny. Thank and you. good luck with your shop here in yes. White Bear Lake, and uh, keep on collecting. And I'll, I'll see if I can dig up some more okay. elements to bring in. Okay, great. All right. Tell your friends. I will. All right. <laughs>